Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting match in Diamond Championship Wrestling. I'm HD and fellas would you go ahead and introduce yourselves. I'm Gene Miller, the owner and uh, promoter of Diamond Championship Wrestling. My name is Andrew Hanson, I'm a pro wrestling enthusiast. And uh, it looks like we're going to have a pretty good match right here between the upcoming rookie John Taylor and the wily veteran known as the Matador as they uh, have a collar devil tie up to start this match off. And the referee calling it off, he's in the corner. And clean break, surprisingly. Oh, what? Went for a big swing, but John Taylor saw it coming. Nice arm drag by John Taylor. Executed very well. And you said today, this is John Taylor's premier match right here, right? This is the first time we've seen him? Yes, he's making his debut with Diamond Championship Wrestling. He uh, just graduated uh, out of wrestling school and he's uh, starting to cut his teeth a little bit. He, uh, he's looking like he's going to be an up-and-comer. That's why we brought him in. Absolutely. I got to tell you, this is a good way to get him started against a wily veteran like the Matador right here. Uh, definitely a good way to get his teeth cut in, so to speak. And uh, arm wrench by the Matador, who has over 20 years' experience in professional wrestling, uh, primarily out of the Kentucky area, but here in Mississippi here tonight. And you see John Taylor tried to go for a hold. And Matador was wow. on drag, but a nice counter by John Taylor. And I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I thought the start off the start off of this match was going to be all Matador with his experience, but Taylor looks like he's uh, got a thing or two, fresh out of wrestling school and ready to compete. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, if I remember, I, this is only uh, I think John's second match, you know, total out of school. So you know, he's showing some promise already. Absolutely, and then, uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, uh, just to plug some upcoming shows, this match right here was actually uh, King of Diamonds qualifying match, and uh, you can catch the big King of Diamonds match at the VFW Post 3373 on Saturday, September 28th, 7.30 bell time at the VFW. You definitely don't want to miss it. Yeah, that'll be a finals. We got, we'll have eight qualifiers at that time. Side headlock by the Matador, again, 20-year-plus veteran, come from the Kentucky area looking to cut his teeth in the Mississippi area to show these uh, young punks, in his words, those were his words, mm -hmm. a thing or two about professional wrestling. And look at this. He was wrenching down on that headlock, and it looks like John Taylor was just getting him in the side there, but the Matador's quick to come back. Nice hip toss after a good tackle by the Matador. Nice hip toss by Taylor, arm drag and the Matador looks confused and now setting him up for a nice body slam by John Taylor. One, two, and a kick out by the Matador. One thing we haven't brought up, our, our senior referee, White Shoes Gravat, back doing his thing again. Absolutely, and uh, you know, John Taylor's calling himself, his nickname is The Zone. I'm not quite sure what that means. But uh, when I asked him about it, he said, you know, it's just it's just a lifestyle. He wants to get in the zone, so he wants to call himself the zone, John Taylor. And uh, the Matador probably doing the most wise thing right now, just taking a little bit of a breather. Uh, the referee giving him count, and, and certainly Matador's not going to lose this match by count out. And uh, John Taylor, he, he, you just got to see how this young rookie's going to do against this veteran. Yeah, you get this as a pure veteran move right there, just getting back and resetting the count. Absolutely. Still just kind of recovering a little bit there. Taking his time. I mean, you know, hey, again, he knows this business up and down. Been in it for over 20 years. The Matador ready to kind of reset and get back to go. And now uh, the question is, is what can John Taylor expect? And now the Matador claiming that he pulled his tights and his mask. And, of course, John Taylor, you know, absolutely denying this. And for that matter, I don't even, I don't even see that he did do that. But, uh, Gene, what's your thoughts on the Matador? Well, you know, like you said, he's a wily veteran, and he's going to uh, known to take any shortcut he can to win. So it's, uh, you know, he's not going to let John get over on him by any means. If he does, he's going to cut him off by cheating, I believe. And there's a lot of jaw jacking between the two right now, and, uh, you know, looks like they're circling back up, getting ready for perhaps another collar elbow tie-up. And, oh, oh kicked him right in the gut. He may have went just slightly below. I can't tell. Nice Man. right by the Matador to John Taylor. And now, uh, I think for the first time in this match, John is really uh, seeing light, so to speak. Nice solid elbow to the head. Absolutely. And the Matador is no longer playing games with the zone John Taylor. Nice right in the corner. The referee trying to tell him, hey, get out of that corner. Wait a minute. Taylor countered. Sending him into the corner. Reversal. No. 
Nice move. Right over him. The Matador after him. Big crossbody off the second. And a quick kick out by the Matador. And once again, going to take a breather. Going to take a breather. I mean, I, you know, I have to say that that's kind of wise, the Matador. You know, this, this young rookie right here is showing that he's got some leaps, so to speak, up in the air. Uh, has went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him technically so far. I mean, the future's bright for John Taylor. I believe you're right. He's a young guy in great shape. You know, when he came out to the ring, all the fans were hooping and hollering. You can tell he spent some time in the gym. So I think the Matador might be a little jealous in that respect because he don't look like he's in good shape as John is. Absolutely not. And uh, But, I mean, you never know what the Matador might have under his sleeves. Like you said, he, the Wiley veteran will do whatever it takes to score a victory. And you, I imagine the gears are kind of turning, so to speak, right now in his head about how to go about this match. I'm sure he didn't expect some of the moves and counters that John Taylor has given him thus far in this match. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, Andrew. You know, John is a, uh, a young guy, so he's going to probably stay one steady stream, you know, head on to the Matador. And so. perhaps a rookie mistake by John Taylor. Uh, Matador went for the collar elbow. He did not quite lock it in, so as a result, the Matador was able to cinch in the headlock, and now perhaps an illegal maneuver right there that looks like a thumb to the throat. Yeah, that's one of them old school moves. Matador says he's pulling his tights or his mask as the referee goes behind, and he does that shortcut with a thumb to the throat. And now he's resorted to just beating on John Taylor after the, te the technically wrestling part of it didn't work out and the high flying obviously didn't work out for him and now uh, just resorting to beating in the head of uh oh Taylor. what's going wait, on here guys wait a minute the referee just gave him a hip <laughs> toss what in the and now John Taylor go what is going on right here uh, somebody explain this to me because uh, I've never seen anything quite like I that. don't quite understand that myself the matador is livid Ooh. and I think that kick was below but the referee did not see it it looks like what was going to happen if he had pinned him in one? I mean, I, I, mean I, I don't know. I don't think John Taylor is, is exactly an official. So, wow. Anything oh, can happen in Diamond Championship Wrestling. Yeah, that was that was interesting. And White Shoes Gravat kind of showing his maneuvers. Did y'all know he had that in him? I did not. And that actually caught me really off guard. Uh, I mean, like I said, anything can happen in Diamond Championship Wrestling. So, I mean, you know, just... I don't play with the referees. That's all I can tell you. you know, right. Refer referees have been known to be taken advantage of, and uh, White Shoes definitely showing that that's not going to happen. Uh -oh. oh, but it looks like he's Karma a bitty. Yes, it did. And an another low blow shot by the Matador. That's just wrong, guys. Absolutely wrong. He's had the John Taylor's had the match the whole time until this point, and now the Matador looks like he's going to lay it in with a steel chair. On John Taylor, this Watch is out, not John. good. Watch out, trial by fire. He's getting a taste of the real thing right here, guys. He's getting ready for, for John Taylor. The referee's getting up, though. This could prove to be bad. Wait a minute. This is an old-school veteran maneuver right here. Oh, my God. This is not right by any means, but the Matador is obviously tricking the referee. Look, his head's up. He's not, he's he's pulling it off well, man. Well, by no means. Live, cheat, and steal, you know, to, to get a win by any means necessary. And hopefully the referee doesn't fall for this. Come on, come on, White Shoes. Give this man an Oscar. I mean, th this can't end this way. I absolutely don't think this should end this way. What is White Shoes gonna do? It looks like he's gonna call the match, and he does. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, the Matador has won this contest, but I mean, come on, did he, he, he was really bested by John. There you go. The referee's decision's final, so he's gonna run off and celebrate his victory. Look at this, he's mad. White Shoes is going out towards him. He's not gonna let John this John Taylor out. was robbed. Hey, and welcome to another episode of After Hour Cinema. Hey, Fred. Did you see what I see? Yes. I'm your host, Lee Turner, and on tonight's episode... Does that amuse you? It's like a dream. Thanks. I like it. I like that, too. Electromagnetic field at Y-Strength. 
like a kid show. <laughs> Be sure to tune in next time for another great low budget flick. You're all invited. What's your great advice? Let's keep the B movies rolling. Welcome everybody to another match from Diamond Championship Wrestling. I'm HD. Gene Miller, the uh, owner of Diamond Championship Wrestling, and myself, Andrew Hansen, and it looks like another King of Diamonds qualifying match between Jamie Powell and member of the main event, MT2. And starting it off strong, MT2 jumping Jamie Powell from behind. I mean, Gene, you know MT2 very well. I mean, this doesn't surprise you, does it? No, not at all. I don't know if you noticed it right before that, the old school assassin grabbed Jamie Powell's leg to distract him. So, you know, they're always up to their tricks. The main event, absolutely, uh, the, along with Vladimir Koloff, the, the trio, uh, one of the most devastating groups in DCW right now. And uh, looks like Jamie Powell's going to come back. Nice drop kick by Jamie Powell, and MT2 is going to take himself a breather. All right, well, while he's taking a breather, guys, tell us a little bit about Jamie Powell. Jamie Powell has been in the wrestling business for about 10 years. Uh, he's definitely looking to rise back up in the ranks of Diamond Championship Wrestling. He's actually a former DCW Tag Team Champion with the Mount Man, who you know very well, Gene Austin. And, uh, you know, again, he's looking to qualify. This is a King of Diamonds qualifying match also. And again, the big finale of this big, like, seven or eight man match is going to take place uh, the 28th of September, 7.30 bell time at the VFW in Pascagoula. That's going to be a good one. Absolutely, and MT2 is looking to get back in the ring. Maybe going to restart things that jumping Jamie Powell didn't quite work out for him, and uh, go from there. Here we yeah. go. Yeah, to remind everybody on this King of Diamonds, the winner of this will get a, a title match of any title that they want. So it, it proved very valuable to Mountain Man because that's how he became the uh, television uh, uh, tag team champion. Crossbody by Jamie Powell, kick out by MT2. Matter of fact, uh, when he cashed in, you were the man next to him to cash in. Yes, I was. I uh, made a comeback and and uh, we'll definitely get we'll definitely talk more about that here in a little while as as the show rolls on. But uh, MT2 now. I mean, that looked more like an illegal chokehold than a chin lock. Yep, MT2 is up. With the experience he's gaining with the main Ooh. event, he's definitely uh, taking a lot of shortcuts. He just kicked that rope, and it looked like it cut off the wind to his head, man. That was a, that was a pretty vicious looking move right there. Without a doubt, now look at the numbers game as MT2 waves to the camera, the assassin laying it in, so to speak, on Jamie Powell, that extra help at ringside. The assassin of Vladimir Koloff is never too far from MT2. And guys, this referee, uh, why don't we introduce him? I don't think I've seen him since I've been calling Diamond Championship Wrestling. Well, that's uh, Brett Ladner. He's a rookie referee, and uh, obviously he, uh, him being a rookie kind of showed just them being distracted by MT2, but nice kick out by Jamie Powell. And uh, he is looking forward to being a part of more DCW events, uh, young up-and-coming referee. And uh, MT2, I mean, he's been in the business for about five or six years now, and uh, multiple-time DCW tag team champion, a former Gulf Coast champion, and and is looking to qualify for the King of Diamonds, which again, you said, Gene, the winner of that, he gets a briefcase and, and is entitled to a title shot for any DCW title at any time. That's right. Oh! Becomes an important factor, you know, holding that briefcase. Definitely the wild card. Nice back elbow just moments ago by MT2. Now off the corner and a big kick to the face. And that, that, hurt. Could, that could be it right there. Uh, I mean, here we go. One, two. two. Jamie Powell somehow managed to kick out. I mean, a kick to the face is no joke. Mm -mm. That's a that's a KO right there, typically. I don't care who you are. Yeah. If, uh, if I, my mind is correct, these two aren't uh, strangers to each other. No, no. As a matter of fact, Jamie Powell uh, and MT2 come from the same... Ooh! Wait a minute. He, What's uh, going on here? Nice counter by Jamie Powell. It did not get the three, but I mean, MT2 did not see it coming, and now Jamie Powell showing some fight left in him. Both of these men graduated from the same training academy, albeit different years apart. They've actually both been trained. Oh! Nice suplex. Going for the cover right here. This could do it. MT2 just barely got his shoulder up. 
Uh, believe it or not, both men were trained by the Mountain Man. Yes. Yep. And uh, which which amazes me, considering MT2's uh, history with the Mountain Man once mm -hmm. he started in the business. But uh, he looks like he's in trouble now, and using young the, using Padawan the that rebelled against his teacher. This is true. Uh, that definitely describes MT2 and has joined forces over the last year with uh, the assassin and Vladimir Koloff. At one point, uh, the Assassin MT2 were the DCW Tag Team Champions as oh. nice backbreaker, backstabber is what they call it, and going for the cover. This could That's do it right guys. here. Maybe a mistake on Jamie's end, just throwing the arm over. He should have hooked the leg perhaps, and that may have done it, but MT2 with the shoulder up. He but, was uh, about a centimeter <laughs> away from the mat, getting that third hand down. And now coming off the second rope, what has he got in mind? MT2 is reeling right now. And oh, watch the assassin right there. This is true. This is true. Oh, he gets it off. Oh. Buster by Jamie Powell going That's for it, the guys. cover. That's it. No, MT2 managed to get his shoulder up once again. MT2 is a pretty good competitor. He's resilient. It's really a shame that he uses underhand tactics that he does to win matches because his, his ability alone could get him wins. And there you go, there the assassin is, right there. The numbers game once again. MT2 with a roll up. This could do it right here. Foot on the ropes. Hey, he had his foot on the ropes, y'all. Foot on the ropes. He stole the victory, and MT2 is qualified for King of Diamonds. Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting match in Diamond Championship Wrestling. As a matter of fact, it is a television title match. And I'm joined with none other than Gene Miller and Andrew Hansen. How y'all doing? Doing great. How about you? Doing good. And um, we've got some familiar faces right now. Tell us a little bit about them. Well, you've got on one corner, you've got the challenger, L.B. Hughes, who is actually a former DCW television champion in his own right. He's looking in this rematch to gain his title back when he faces off against Steve O'Malley, the current Diamond Championship Wrestling television champion. And this is going to be an exciting match. What do you think, Gene? Yeah, O'Malley, as everybody knows, he's been working with us the whole time we've uh, been in existence. Uh, he's been the heavyweight champion. He's been, uh, now he's a television title. He's pretty much getting closed in on being every champion that we have. He's a grizzled veteran, you know, he's, LB's got his hands full. Absolutely, and uh, I mean, like you said, O'Malley has held every single singles title that Diamond Championship Wrestling has had to offer that the Gulf Coast Championship, the television championship, which he just won recently, the heavyweight title, even the uh, now defunct light heavyweight championship. Steve O'Malley has done it all as far as the singles division in DCW is concerned and uh, definitely look forward to the future showing his wily veteran skills, like you said, just now against LB Hughes. Yeah, he's pretty good. Now, LB's made uh, some great strides in the last few months with Diamond Championship Wrestling. And he won that title and he's you know, held on to it for a few months, defending against anybody and everybody. And you know, O'Malley uh, just had a better night that night when he won the title. So this is going to be interesting to see how this rematch goes. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, Steve O'Malley was, uh, you know, kind of, so to speak, on the fan favorite side for a little while there. And uh, he decided uh, just recently that, you know, the fans weren't exactly helping him, that, you know, he needed to do whatever it took he felt in his mind Ooh. to. Uh, make history in DCW, and, and that resulted in the television championship win. Well, it'll be doing, it the, as they call it, the old school, jumping off the top row, bringing that axe handle down on the shoulder. Absolutely, and uh, working, working that arm, working that arm, both arms look like a Steve O'Malley, and side headlock locked in now, headlock takeover, and uh, O'Malley's not looking too good at the moment. No. Like I said, LB's come, you know, come a long way. He's looking pretty strong. Look at his body. He's been taking care of himself in the gym. And, uh, and it's showing inside the ring you know, what he's doing for himself. Absolutely. You can catch both of these guys at uh, our next event, the uh, Diamond Championship Wrestling Show, uh, Saturday, September 28th at the VFW in Pascagoula, 7.30 bell time. Uh, it's going to be a great event. And... Kind of a stalemate between the two, it looks like. And now uh, LB just kind of charging O'Malley, Ooh. taking him into the corner. Now, shoulder to the gut. The referee, if he gets to the count of five, that could be a disqualification. LB better, he better breathe, <laughs> so to speak. And uh, for anybody watching at home, if you've never 
been to a live Diamond Championship wrestling event, if you think it's exciting at home, just you need to see it live because it is something to see. It is a spectacle, and it's always fun, always exciting. So I can't agree more. As LB went for the cover, kick out by O'Malley. It's going to take a lot to take uh, O'Malley out in this match. You know, he did just win the uh, DCW Television Championship, and he's looking to hold it for quite some time. O'Malley's, a, like I said, he's a good veteran. He's got a lot of staying power. Nice. Name. It takes a lot to put him down and keep him down. This is true. I mean, and, and again, you know, we've been touting his uh, history with DCW. There is a reason that he's won all those championships at in DCW from the heavyweight title all the way down. And oh, nice chop to the chest. Uh, you know, not looking good at the moment, but no, O'Malley, he probably has a trick or two up the sleeve, so to speak. Yeah, I think so. LB's working that crowd right now, asking if they want one more, one more chop. One more, and they may just get it, and they do. It looked like a nice one based off the reaction alone from Steve O'Malley, and O'Malley's probably not feeling good right now. Now he's asking the crowd, do you want one more chop to the chest? And there you go, that trick up the sleeve I was talking about. Right to the eyes, that is an illegal maneuver. And wow. now responding with chops of his own, and nice elbow to the head. Uh, Dusty Rhodes would have liked that elbow. Yeah. See, the difference now, the, the veteran thing we're talking about with O'Malley, he's doing these maneuvers and these attacks on, on LB concurrent, quickly. Oh, right. Where LB was taking his time, asking the crowd for help and all that stuff. O'Malley knows better than that. Now, don't get me wrong. The, the, the energy from the crowd could really could really help a performer, but you are right in this case. He may have, he may have not used his time right, and as a result, he's paying for it. Uh, that wasn't exactly a legal maneuver, though, by O'Malley choking him on the ropes just then. Yeah, O'Malley's always got tricks up his sleeve. I mean, continuously. I mean, the, you can tell O'Malley's game plan is to uh, cut the oxygen out, you know, wear him out, you know, make him tired. Uh, you, you know, like you said, LB is in tremendous shape. You can tell he, very, he takes care of himself, probably takes care of himself cardiovascular-wise, and O'Malley wants to cut that out so he can get a quick victory. And uh, using, using the corners of the ring very appropriately, you know, doing what he can to cut the wind supply out from LB Hughes, and a nice charge with a clothesline. O'Malley, you know, he takes care of himself too, they would say. You know, I, I've seen the videos of him in the gym working out, and going for the cover right there, Looks like his, uh, well, actually, he may be choking him. And O'Malley perhaps getting frustrated of uh, them shots to the head. Maybe that fist was closed. Again, another illegal maneuver by O'Malley and choking him with his boot. And Gene, I mean, uh, do you have a prediction on this match? Do you, uh, do you, know, do you know who you feel your mind may win? Well, you know, LB's really hungry. He wants to win, but you know, Sometimes it's tough to go against a veteran in, in the, the different tricks that he has up his sleeve. You know, I'm, I'd have to put my money back on, on O'Malley, but you know, I might be a crow when I say that because LB's been pretty tough. And he just slung him into the corner so hard that he actually face planted afterwards. What about you, HD? Who do you, who do you feel like is going to come out with the victory? You know, these are two of the most. Oh, well, here we go. Let's go see what happens cover. here. It's going to be it right here. Oh, very close, but he got a shoulder up. These are two of the, uh, some of the most exciting wrestlers, Diamond Championship Wrestling, I've been watching over the years. Uh, so honestly, I don't really have an opinion on this. I, I, I hope LB wins. I enjoy LB, and I, I, mean, I like an upset, but you can never count O'Malley out. Big running power slam, showing his strength. LB, he should have went for the cover, though, in my opinion. That was a big move. He could have went for the cover to win this match. But instead, he's going to go high risk. He got greedy. High risk, high reward. Yeah, there's one thing I, I, I've said about LB. This shows his uh, uh, youthfulness in the ring. He's playing up to the crowd quite a bit, and he's taking a lot of time. Going up top. Guys, what's about to happen here? Oh, oh he moved out of the way. That's He took a risk. It did not work out. Uh, if, if O'Malley can capitalize on this, you know, this could be it for LB Hughes. Yeah, LB's worse for wear right now. Even though O'Malley's not getting up too fast, LB took the brunt of that, I think, on his knees. Absolutely, and uh, I mean, he is favoring the elbow, though. He did go for an elbow drop, and now O'Malley and LB both starting to stir up a little bit. 
LB did make it to his feet first. And oh. big clothesline by LB Hughes, and he's now coming in strong. Second win, so to speak. Here we go. Big body slam by LB Hughes. I tell you what, guys, if this match was based off of style points, I think LB's got him beat. Absolutely, but you know, you know, he's the got the, the flares going on. The, the shoes is like I mean, they look like uh, Jordan sneakers. This is true. This is true. Very nice attire, but Ooh. O'Malley doesn't really worry about his attire so much. But the scissors kick that could do it right there. The big axe kick. I, that's his signature maneuver. If he can just shoot the half and get him over, he's got the leg hooked. That's this it. could do it right here. Three. And Steve O'Malley managed to get his shoulder up. You can see the disappointment on LB Hughes' face. He thought that was it. We all thought that was well, it. Well, you know, the, the axe kick is LB Hughes' signature maneuver. He has taken out many of superstars that way. And uh, unfortunately, it did not work out for him this time. It could, it could perhaps be, you know, just the physical toll that this match has gone upon him as he's got a roll up. And it looks like, it looks like O'Malley has the tights. And that's it. That's it right there. O'Malley managed to pull off a sneaky victory. As a result, he is still your DCW television champion. Welcome to another episode of After Hour Cinema. Hey, Fred. Did you see what I see? Yes. I'm your host, Lee Turner. And on tonight's episode... <laughs> Does that amuse you? It's like a dream. Thanks. I like it. I like that, too. Electromagnetic field at Y strength. Looks like a kid show. <laughs> Be sure to tune in next time for another great low-budget flick. You're all invited. What's he raving about? Let's keep the B-movies rolling. Team, you gotta be tougher than that. Are you kidding me? Oh, okay, guys, listen up. I want you to get low out there, all right? Lower than Petro's prices. No, well, can't do that. Uh, I want you to get solid hits out there. Solid. As solid as Petro's sales team, okay? As solid as. Guys, y'all are looking good out there, man. Looking great. Oh! Excuse me, guys. Excuse me. Oh! Ah! You know, Petro's got some really good deals right now. Some specials on some trucks, specials on cars, great deals for high schoolers, you know, you think about graduating soon, maybe you'll get a card. Hey, you know, Petro's got some really good deals going on right now. Coach, your team is on fire. It's almost like Petro's What are you doing deal. here? What are you talking about? How'd you get my here? whistle? We appreciate your sponsorship, but guys, get him out of here. Wait, what, Coach? Coach! No! Coach! Wait a minute! <sighs> oh, looks like my coaching days are over, but if you're looking to score a great deal on a car or truck, come see us at Team Petro. Petro makes the difference for you. You're watching WGUD.